Did they find the candy in her mouth? Yes. They found the candy in her mouth? Yes. This is 42-year-old Robert Latroy Howard, a registered sex offender accused of the murder of 12-year-old Naomi Jones. After a citywide hunt for the search of her killer showed no results, the investigators reached a surprising breakthrough, which compelled them to question Howard not once, not twice, but four times. In this video, we're taking you through the interrogation of Robert Howard and how he cracked under pressure and confessed. On May 31st, 2017, Shantara Hurry, the mother of Naomi and two boys, got a call from one of her sons that after the three went out with the dog for a walk and came back, Naomi left the apartment around 1.30 p.m. again, but this time she left alone. This was unusual as she'd never leave the house unless it was with her brothers to walk the dog. The mother rushed back to her apartment in North Pensacola and went around the neighborhoods, knocking on doors to see if her daughter was there. None of the neighbors saw anything, so she immediately filed a missing persons report that day. Detective Michelle Wirt handled the investigation and first thought that it was a runaway case. But after questioning the mother, she became convinced that it was a kidnapping. So now the investigation began with the neighborhood where everyone was questioned about their whereabouts. The investigators also made a list of potential suspects, all from the family who might be involved. They first looked at Chantara's father, Robert Jones, who hadn't been very present in Naomi's life. But he had an alibi that checked out and was no longer a suspect. They also looked at Chantara's ex-boyfriend, who had the means and motive to kidnap, but he also had an alibi that checked out. They moved towards searching for known sexual offenders and predators in the database to see who could have been the closest thing. That man was Robert Latroy Howard. In 1999, he was convicted and sentenced to 15 years for two counts of assault and rape. Keep in mind that while he lived in Alabama, which is a two hour and 45 minute drive away from Pensacola, he did spend a lot of time in that apartment complex. It's been a hard day for the community here. Right behind me is where Robert Howard was registered as a sex offender. And most when the authorities questioned him, he claimed to be in Alabama on the night of Naomi's disappearance. But later, the authorities went back on his background, looked closer at his alibi, and decided to go for a second time. The crazy part is that his story changed. Robert claimed that he had actually been nearby on the night of the disappearance. The difference between the first questioning and the second was that his girlfriend, Lauren Ewing, was present for the second one. Perhaps he didn't want to lie in front of her, but that was his first slip-up. Now, with his shaky alibi and slip-up, the investigators had probable cause to gain a search warrant for his phone, and they confirmed through the phone records that he was near the apartments. Seven days after the kidnapping, Naomi was found, dumped and taped under a bridge in Pensacola Creek. There was duct tape and orange plastic stuck to her hair, and her cause of death was revealed to be asphyxiation nearly 24 to 36 hours after the kidnapping. Now, with the apartment location and the location where the body was found, the investigators started going through footage that was captured by nearby businesses, car dash cams, and anything that could bring them closer to finding the killer. While all this was carried out, they turned their attention back to Robert Howard. On June 6, 2017, he was brought in for interrogation, which was technically his third time being questioned. So I appreciate you coming up and talking to us. Well, they could have uh, just told me to meet somebody here because I brought my little boy back to his mom today. Oh, did you? Yeah, and they were like, well, come in down here to sign this and uh, get there. They're telling me you got to come back down. Wow. Uh, all right. No, this is fine. It's cool. No problem. So you hadn't seen Naomi? No. Do you know who Naomi is? Yes, I know exactly who she is. I see her, well, you see her every time we're in and out the apartment. Mm -hmm. Her and her brother be either playing with their dog, or they're on that back balcony, or they're in between the apartments playing. Mm -hmm. You know, they speak anytime we come in or out, they speak. Mm -hmm. So I know who she was, yes. Did, had you seen her at all that day? No, ma'am. Okay. You live in the next building over? She lives in, like, they're downstairs here. My girlfriend's apartment's upstairs here. On the next building over? Yes. Okay, so you left. Okay, you talked to Naomi's mom. Yes. Hadn't seen her, blah, blah, blah. What did she say to you? Anything? No, she just asked me how I'd seen her. I told her no ma'am I hadn't seen her. She was like, well, you know, that she had, don't, she told me she like, she don't know how long she'd been gone and that her brother didn't even know how long that she'd been gone. Mm -hmm. But she said that um, he didn't know she had left. Okay. And so we stood there and talked. Like I told her, I said, no, if I 
hear or see anything, I would let her know who I would call Lauren and let Lauren let her know. And I told her if she found her to call Lauren or let Lauren to let me know that you know, she was found. Okay. Now, this interrogation is important, but different from the one you came for. You see, all he did was deny seeing Naomi that day, and his answers even seem straightforward. He seems calm in his response, which indicates that he's telling the truth. But just two hours after this interrogation ended, a major breakthrough occurred. Something that compelled the officers to arrest Howard and bring him back for an interrogation again. We'll get to what that breakthrough was in a second, but for now, after Ron spent nearly 35 minutes alone in the interrogation handcuffed, the officer stepped in. Hello. Mr. Howard, right? Okay. I'm Investigator Work. Okay. Um, we're investigating that missing, missing girl from the apartment complex. Um, and we've been talking to a ton of people canvassing the area, trying to get everybody to, you know, give samples of DNA. I have a consent to search if you would be willing to do a DNA swab. Sure. Yeah? Okay. No? Sure. Or yes. yes. Okay. Yes, yes. I, I didn't know if you said no or yes. All right. Today's date is the 7th. Mm -hmm. of June. Mm -hmm. It's Gamby County Sheriff's Office. 10.46 p.m. Okay, I'm going to read these instructions. And I'll have them come take that handcuff off. You're not under arrest at all, so I'll have them take that off. Uh, um, when I pulled up, they... Yeah. Surrounded me, I'm like, they said, need to talk to me. All this to talk. Okay. I mean, yeah. we just, I just came here a few yeah. hours ago. I'm going to have that taken off. Okay. I didn't realize you were even handcuffed over there, but yeah. um, you're not under arrest. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Howard consents to getting a buckle swab, knowing full well that if he denies it, it'll look bad for him. Of course, by law, his denial can't be used against him, but the detectives will still make an extra effort to understand why. But anyway, he has agreed to the swab and understood his rights, so after the swabs are taken, the interrogation will begin. All right, this gentleman's going to get your buckle swabs. Just there. How you doing, Robert? I'm Brent, man. All right, I'm the crime scene guy. I'm sort of like uh, Owen Mills, so I got to do photos and I got to do... Uh, the DNA swab, all right? It's really easy. You ain't got to move around or anything like that. I need for you to open that up, though. Take your swivel water wrist around in your mouth. That way you get all that dry mouth, cotton mouth soil. Because this is going to make you just a little drier there, okay? You don't need to check your tabs or anything, because that song was coming from Brent, the buckle swab guy. It's weird why that song would be blaring out loud, but think of it as the theme song for Brent the Buckle Swab Guy. Anyways, after the opening question and the DNA swab, the detective asks him something that ties him to the breakthrough. Pin too, okay, buddy? Yeah. All, right. All right, open up. I'm going to do the left cheek first. All right. So right here, look at, look at me. Mm -hmm. Left. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to do the front gum. All right. All right. Front gum, okay. and then we're going to do the right. Try to get the right hand. Come on. There we go. Okay, open up for me. Let's see, take another swig, man. I told you it was going to dry you out. I forewarned you. All right, then we're going to do the right. Okay, I'm going to write on here C H K, meaning cheek. Mm -hmm. All right, what I'd like for you to do, man, if you don't mind, is it that way it's official? Yes, I need for you to go ahead and just write your initials, mm -hmm. and we're going to go with a time of 22, 53, please.
Okay. No, don't close it. I got to do that there. I got to do that in front of you too, man. Okay. Go. What's your first name? Robert? Robert yeah. uh, R-O-B-E-R-T? Yeah. And what's your last name, sir? Howard. Howard. Yeah. H-O-W-A-R-D? Yeah. And what's your D-O-B, buddy? 319-79. 319-79. And today's date is the 7th of June, 17. And I'm going to go with the same time that we went here, 23, 50, uh, where did I put? 2253. All right, so 2253. And I introduce myself as Brent Davis, okay? Yes, sir. All right, man. All right, Michelle, can you keep that water or do you want it to go? No, you can keep it. Okay. Yeah, you want it? Yeah. I okay, okay. Keep it from drying out, man. Because this stuff, once you get that in there, it just kind of dries you out good. All right. All right, let's cover bases again one more time, Robert. All right here next to the date and the time, just initial right there to the line for me. We'll do like that, all right? All right, buddy. Got any questions for me? All right, let's stand right there against the wall. I'm going to take uh, three photos, all right? Yeah. I'll do overall. Mid. Close. All right, bud. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, man. I'll be right back. Okay. This investigator in Finger, or agent in Finger, used to work here. How you doing? How you doing? What's your name? Robert. Robert, Robert I'm Matt. Okay. All right. Can you give me your full name? Robert Howard. Latroy, Robert Latroy Howard. Latroy? Yeah, L-A-T-R-O-Y. What's your birthday? 31979. And where do you live? For 210 Ball Lane. Lot 30, Bruton, Alabama. And a phone number for you? Um, 251 363. Mm -hmm. oh. 863. 850. 363? Yes. Okay. 7930. Is that a cell or home? Cell. Cell? Yeah, I have cell. And that's your cell? Yes. Okay. And where do you work? Freight car. Freight car? Freight. F R I T C A R. Where's that at? Bruton. Do you have an address for them? Mm. Is it 1865 or 1365? I don't want to say 1865, Douglas Avenue. Douglas? Douglas, Douglas Avenue. Douglas Avenue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Before we get started, mm -hmm. I want to read over your rights, okay? okay? Like I said, you're not under arrest at this mm -hmm. time. I just want to read these over before we get started talking about anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, today's date is the 7th of June, mm -hmm. 2017. Game County Sheriff's Office yeah. is 1056. 1056. All right. All right. Yeah, the rights remain silent. Mm -hmm. Anything you say can be used as evidence against you in court. Okay. You have the right to have a lawyer present while being questioned. Mm -hmm. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, a lawyer will be appointed for you without cost before questioning. If you wish to have any answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering questions at any time. You understand those right? Yes. Okay. If you understand and you want to speak with us, just print there and sign. Okay, and like I said, the other investigator gave me the information that she had obtained when she talked to you earlier this morning. And I know you've been talked to prior to that also, so you mm -hmm. probably are like getting a little bit worn out of the talking to us. But we just have to go over details just because, you know, it is um, a missing little girl, mm -hmm. or not a missing little girl. She's now deceased. Yeah, um, and you live in the apartment, or you, your girlfriend lives in the apartment. apartment yeah. What apartment does she live in? 216. Apartment 216? Yes. All right. And what's her name again? Lauren. Lauren Ewing. What is it? Lauren Ewing. 
Ewing? Yes. E U E W? Okay. And it's L A U R E N. Okay. And you guys have a child together? Yes. One year old. Baby, right? One year old. This information is vital because according to the CCTV from the bridge where the body was dumped just 12 hours after Naomi went missing, there was a car driving sporadically around the bridge. That car was the silver Nissan Altima driven by Howard. This breakthrough brought him back here. So let's see if he has some answers to give. What, uh, what vehicle did you... I always drive my vehicle to work. Which one? Uh, the Nissan Altima. Okay. So you were in that car that night? Yes, I'm in that car every night. Okay. The reason why Robert asked these questions about his girlfriend's house being searched is because he worries whether there will be any traces of Naomi's DNA in there. He also covers it up by saying that Naomi has not been in his girlfriend's apartment, and I'm quoting, when he's around. That means she might have been there, which would be consistent with a DNA match. But at the same time, Howard would not be lying. I had a question. Mm-hmm. I've been, wait, am I, am I, is my house and vehicle going to be searched? Because yes. I've been looking, okay, that's all yes. I'm asking. Because yes. I haven't cleaned it. Everything is still yes. the same. That's, that's what, what they're I, doing right okay, now. So That's, that's yeah. what I've been waiting on. That's just like yeah. I well, told not, today. Yeah, I, mean, house, I know you're not saying like that. And I know why y'all are taking precautions because mm-hmm. of you know, yeah. my status. And like I say, you know. I've just been waiting on this to happen because I knew it was going to happen. So that's all, that's all I wanted to know. That's fine. What is your your background or your history? Or well, when I was in high, well, right after I got out of high school, me and a girl was messing around. Um, she got pregnant. And her grandmother is like a master or whatever. So it was more of I made her than you being consensual to the point of, yeah. Because we had been doing this the whole summer. And so I said, I got, um, well, I copped out because I didn't have no money to try to afford a lawyer. So I had to cop out and I did 15 years. How old were you? Like 18 years old. And how old was she? Like 17. Okay. What year was that? 1998. What was the charge? Um, First degree rape. First degree rape? Yes. And that was in Alabama? Yes. She was 17 years old. Yes. Okay. Was there, was there another charge that you had in your history? Yeah, it was, um, say the same thing. It was just another girl put in, but it was like, basically like, I did this same thing to this other girl. You got her pregnant or you just? No, I didn't okay. get her pregnant. It was just, we was messing around and she said I made her. And it's the same time that this other girl said the same thing. And Basically, was, they said I did the same thing to both of them in the same night at the same time. So you were 18. How was it old was this girl? Same age. So both 17. Now, my paperwork, I don't know if this changed, but in my paperwork, I, it had like two different ages. Then it was a white female. It's not a white female. It's two black females, and they were the same age. I don't know if they ever changed it because they got my tattoos. Because yeah, I thought else. one of them was a younger female. Yeah, they, 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 got, they, all, they got a lot of my stuff messed up. They got okay. the tattoos and everything messed up. So that, you know, I don't know if they changed it or fixed it, but... Mm-hmm. We're all like 17, 18 years old. And it was two black females. Okay. The missing girl, um, have you ever seen her around the complex or? See her all the time when we were in and out. I said, well, we would come in. They would be either playing between the complexes or on her mom's back balcony because we went up the steps. You can see their balcony or their back porch, rather, from the balcony. Um, they would always speak whenever we would come in and out. And other than that, that was about it. She dances a lot back there, doesn't she? I guess. On the, ba- mm-hmm. on the balcony. Well, they'd be back there playing most of the time mm-hmm. when I see them as far as dancing. I don't know. Yeah. I heard she does a lot of dancing. Mom says she dances on the back porch a lot. That's what we see them back there Was play. she friendly? I mean, I mean she little always little spoke. I mean, I said, other than that, that's pretty much all I know about her. I said, she would always speak. If she seen us, she would speak. Regardless of if we seen her or not, she would let us know that she was there. She would speak. I got you. Um... Did she ever come over to y'all's apartment or anything? She's never been to our apartment. So we've basically. never been to Lauren's. If she has, she's been there when I wasn't there. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Lauren told me one day that they missed the bus and they came and used her phone to call their mom and let her know they missed the bus. Other than that, that's that's all I know about them being there. Okay. So she's never been in Lauren's apartment other than 
Just not when at I was the there. door? Not, not when I was there. Okay. What about, have they ever been in your cars? No. Either one of your cars? No. Imagine being asked, what's your type? And instead of mentioning some body type or anything specific, you say, grown women. <laughs> this shows that Howard is slowly feeling the pressure and won't be so casual with his responses. Of course, why would he be? This guy's been asked in for questioning for the fourth time, and they know they're inching closer to him. Now you'll see the detectives take a more direct and aggressive approach. Did you say you left the apartment that day? To, to go up to Bruton? Which time? I went twice. It had been friend. earlier in the I day. I went to see a friend. I left around like, posted by 12, 15, 12, 30. Okay. I went to see what friend? Um, Yolanda Mitchell. When did you do that? Um, that Wednesday. Okay. I didn't have that in the list of stuff we went through. Where was it before you dropped Lauren off or after you it was dropped After I dropped Lauren off. When I dropped Lauren off. That's where. That's I where went. you went yeah, before I went to see her. Yeah, I was going to see her. Okay. Now, she lives in Bruton. That's why I was going to Bruton to see. Okay. So, you got into Bruton. It's, I have down 130 to 140. Mm -hmm. And then you went to? I was going to see her, but when... What's her name again? Yolanda Mitchell. Y-O-L-U-N. D-R-A. Mitchell. M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L. -L. Okay, you're, and you're going to go to her house? Yes. Where she live? I cannot remember the street name, but it's at 112. Her phone number is 251-591-6108. Mm -hmm. um, and you gave me her phone number, so mm -hmm. I could just check to see that you called her. Mm -hmm. Okay. You went to her house on the, on your lunch break? Yes, that evening, yes. Okay. How long were you there? Mm, about 30 minutes, maybe. It was just like a lunch break. And she lived like right around the corner. Well, yeah, basically right around the corner from Fred, the neighborhood over across from it. What kind of girls are you into? I mean, what's your, what do you like? Mm, I like grown women. I mean, women is my age. I mean, I really have no preference of what size or, you know, how fat or how skinny, how tall or thin, but they're going to be legal, you know. I'm not, I don't fool with no kids, I don't mess with no teenagers, anything like that. At one point, he's being smart by denying and sticking to his story. But because we just showed you the evidence against him, we all know he's lying. Let's see where this denial takes him. I mean, you like younger girls, like... I mean, I haven't been with anyone younger than Lauren. What's the youngest girl you've been with? Lauren is the youngest girl I've been with. She's 30? 30, yes. I got you. Is there any reason, like, your DNA would be on Naomi's body or anything like that? Uh, I don't see why it would be. We've never been in speed distance of each other. So, there's no reason it would be. Okay. So you've never had any physical contact? None with whatsoever. Okay. What if What if I were to tell you that your car was in the area where her body was found that night? No, that's impossible. Why? I mean, because it, it could have been. Why? Tell me why. Because when I have my car, it's either at work, when I live work, I come straight back to um, Johnson Avenue, Lawrence Apartment. Did anybody else have your car that night? No one ever has my car. So you don't know, does Lauren ever drive your car? She has a few times, but it's been mm, a little while since she drove my car. Okay. You don't ever loan your car out? No. Okay. I'm just going to be honest with you. What, what time did you pick Naomi up? I never picked Naomi up. Just being honest with you. You sure about that? I'm positive. Well, about the time you leave your apartment is the time she goes missing. But the thing about that is, when I drop Lauren off, I go straight to Bruton. So, how is it that I can pick her up? The thing about that is, is that we already have your phone records. 
Okay. And you were at the apartments at 1.30. I was gone at 1.30. Phone records show no. You were there at 1.30. That phone number that you gave me is phone number we subpoenaed mm -hmm. for the records. You were at the apartments at 1.30. You were not in Bruton. I was on my way to Bruton. You were... I'm not going to argue okay. with you. I mean, you don't have to argue, but, but okay, just, okay. If you say I was at the apartment, just please search my license. Nothing has been changed in my car since the day that the first officer flipped through it and looked through it. Everything is in there. If you find anything in that car, it's going to be from your laundry Mitchell. Now he's painting himself as a victim, given his status and the fact that he cleaned his car. But his phone records, the CCTV footage, and his denial lead us to believe that he is the potential suspect, no matter how much he plays the victim card. This goes on for hours, until Howard finally says something that he instantly regrets saying. I never got her to get in my car. She's never been in my car. That's why I've never cleaned my house. I've never cleaned my car. Because of that. So I feel like if I clean that car... And y'all find it clean? Oh, well, he cleaned it before we can get to it. That's why I didn't do that. Because I feel like, you know, it's eventually going to come. So. I'm already, you know, have a status of sex offender. So whatever I have is going to be searched. I feel like that anyway. Right. Because I'm already a potential suspect, I guess. Let me say that. What made you feel that way? Like I just told you. I feel like, you know, when you look through it, I'm right there at the complex where this child's missing. I'm right there. I'm already, like I said, sex offender status is over my head already. So I'm right there. So he's, you know, he's right here. So why not just check him out? All right. That's why. To get myself in the clear, I said I wasn't cleaning the car, and I wasn't cleaning my house. And if you need to search it, go through it, however, do that. So, this was part of the investigation that nobody but the investigators and the actual killer knew. When Naomi was found, there was candy in her mouth. Howard asked this question for some sick, twisted reason, but because this information wasn't public, the question comes up, how does he know that? Let me help you. Let me help. Let's talk about it. I already Let's told you what I... Well, listen to me, Rock. I understand you tell him that, but I'm still... I, 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 I'm, I still feel like I'm definitely going to see like that. I mean, I said it's nobody's fault with my own, but I mean, I said I am sorry for what happened to his child. But at the same time... I, now, I, I can't wrap my fucking head around it. What could have gone so bad for you to do this to this girl? Did he find the candy in her mouth? Yes. He found the candy in her mouth? Yes. What was it? It was candy. What kind of candy? I have no idea. I just know she was eating candy. Ma'am. Listen to me, Robert. I'm not, trying, I'm not here to pass judgment on you to belittle you, talk down to you, anything like that. You're a grown man, okay? I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. But what I would like to do is have some answers. What happened when she came out of the house? Were you outside when they were walking the dog? No. You just happened to see her coming back outside? Not really outside. You were? Where were you at? I just came down the steps. Okay. Did she come out the door? She had came out, she spoke. Spoke back. Um, she said she didn't like my shoes. She liked your shoes? 
on the back here. And she said something that I didn't understand. I then I you know, you know. So I said, what did you say? She was like, nuts. Went over to my car. Got two hours out of my trunk. She went in the hospital and went for a break. I came back out. She went to my charger. Went to the car. And she said, yeah. And I asked her what she said. She told me you heard. I said, no, I didn't. What did you say? And she was like, well, where's Lawrence? I said, Lawrence, at work. She said, can I come in with you? And I told her no. And she couldn't come in. She was kept on me. I let her come over, I let her come over. I kept telling her no. She walked over to the steps and I was going up the steps. And she said, I'm coming here. And I said, like, no. The further I went up, the further she came and go. When I make it to the door, she's in the top of the steps, and I tell her to go back home. Go home. She stands there and she's like, why can't I come in? Why can't I come in? I said, because you can't. You don't need to be over here. Leave. She starts back down the step, closes the door. I lock the door. She knocks on the door. I ask the door and I ask her to leave again. As I walk back out on the balcony because I didn't want the one to get to the session that I was trying to lure her in, drawing her in. I walk back out of the bathroom. There's not no one in sight, no one. And I was like, you know, man, on any particular day, it'd be a hundred people around right here. But in this instance, there's no one here. So, walk back to me in the bathroom. And God uh, tell her just to go home. Like, yeah, go home. So she starts down the steps like she's going to leave. So when I turn around, she comes back again. When she comes back again this time, she walks all the way up on me like she's trying to brush up against me, telling me I'm scared of her. I'm like, I'm not scared of you. I just need you to leave. If something happened and somebody say something, then you got a problem. There ain't going to be no problem. There ain't going to be no problem. So I don't go back to the house. I, I don't even go back in the apartment. I go some of the steps. And I'm trying to wait on her just to leave because I don't want no problems about her behind that door. Right. So when I go get up, I go throw some of the garbage. She comes right over to the garbage can where I am. Walk back up the steps. Walk back in the house. She's coming back up the steps. She comes to the door. So, when she gets to the door, I stand at the door and talk to her. She stands there and she's making gestures to my, can she come in? Can she come in with me? I said, no, you can't come in. So she's still standing there. So right when I close the door, she grabs the knob, tries to open it. I said, get away from the door. Just let you get away from the door. Yeah, man. She leaves. I turn around and close the door again. She knocks again. She knocks and finally I open it. She comes in. And she never leaves, never goes no further than the front door. And she's making gestures, sexual gestures. Like what? Can she see the door? Um, she can handle the you no, know, she got a boyfriend that's 15 and this, that, and other. I'm like, well, I ain't got nothing to do with that. No, I really don't. And at this time is when she didn't grab my, but she grabbed it like my shirt, the bottom of my shirt, like she was trying to. 
And so when I grabbed the wrist, told her to stop. And she was keeping on, keeping on. And I just, I really didn't mean for things to go where they did. I didn't try to hurt the child. But before I realized I had choked her out. How? Just around the neck? Around the neck. I choked her out around the neck. And I said, I didn't really mean for it to happen. I didn't mean to do it. You know, I heard when she was found. That's why I said I don't, I would really like for them to take a DNA test because they said when she was found, she didn't have one no bottom. She was fully dressed. She was fully dressed. I never took any of her clothes off. I never took anything anywhere. She was fully dressed. And there it is, the confession. Whether or not his description of Naomi is true is irrelevant at this point, as he has agreed to strangle, which means he pleaded guilty to first-degree murder. After four years of unplanned delays due to COVID-19, Robert LaTroy Howard was sentenced to life for the murder of Naomi. While the verdict would not bring back Naomi, it did bring a certain level of justice back into the system. This was how Robert Howard cracked under pressure and confessed to murdering a 12-year-old girl. And as always, thanks for watching.